Good afternoon. My name is Thurman Barker. I'm a drummer and percussionist and um, uh, a leader uh, of the ensemble, my percussion quintet entitled Strike Force. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of this upcoming series that's celebrating the 50th anniversary of the AACM. I am honored to be a part of the series. The concert uh, that I'm participating in uh, kicks off uh, February, Thursday, February 26 at 8 o'clock at Roulette. That particular night, I'm presenting my percussion quintet entitled Strike Force. Um, I'm also happy to be able to share the program with pianist, uh, composer Amina Claudine Myers. I will be presenting uh, and premiering a new composition uh, entitled uh, Southside Suite. Strike Force performed um, in an interpretation series at Roulette once before. Uh, when I was asked to do it again, I thought I would bring in a uh, Lonnie Gasparini, who is playing Hammond B3 organ. All of us, when we're together, we talk about the, the legend of Mr. Roach and the music he's laid down, and also uh, the work uh, of Warren Smith's work with uh, uh, Lifetime with Tony Williams. And so I just thought this would be a golden opportunity to um, explore more of that sound, and that's one of the reasons why um, I'm bringing in um, Gasparini to accompany uh, us and fill in a lot of holes, and that would actually free up um, Eli and uh, Brian Carrot to explore uh, um, a little bit more freedom on their instrument. Uh, during the performance. So uh, that was one of the reasons why I'm bringing in uh, Lonnie Gasparini to explore more of that sound. Also, this performance will be dedicated to a, a, one of the original members of Strike Force who uh, since then has uh, made his transition. His name is Wilson Mormon. And he was, he was really an integral part of the band since the band uh, began. And uh, so I'd like to dedicate this performance to Wilson. He played a very important role. He was our timpani man in the band. I like to look at him as the timpani master of the group. Uh, we have a new member of the ensemble. His name is Malik Washington. And uh, Malik will be taking over uh, the role of uh, timpani and also playing uh, marimba. Brian Carrot will be playing primarily on vibraphone um, and also percussion. We all will be moving around playing some small percussion instruments, but mainly um, there are some guys who are primarily uh, playing one instrument. Brian Carrot is primarily playing vibraphone. Eli Fontaine will be playing timpani and also marimba. Uh, Malik Washington will, will also be sharing the um, position of timpani and uh, marimba. Ray Mantia will be playing orchestra bells and congas, timbales, and percussion. And um, myself will be playing uh, trap drums and percussion. I am one of the original members of the AACM. I was indoctrinated into the organization, um, I guess, um, at the end of 1964. Um, I, um, my whole life changed 
uh, upon uh, attending a rehearsal of the experimental band. Uh, first of all, it changed because um, now the uh, uh, I was introduced to musicians such as Roscoe Mitchell, uh, Phil Coran, um, Muhal Richard Abrams, of course, was uh, uh, at the podium conducting. What was exciting about this new music that I had no idea about uh, was it was original music. So it was all new, not only to me, but probably was new to the composer as well. Upon my first rehearsal, uh, I knew that I was in a creative environment. Being the youngest in this environment, and I really mean the youngest uh, in this environment. Uh, of course, you know my parents wanted to know what, you know what their son was involved in, and they even attended a few rehearsals to see um, um, what was going on, and they saw that these musicians were gentlemen. They were respectful and. They um, were serious about the music that they were doing, and it was a legitimate space uh, to uh, work out some music. Um, so they were fine about where I was, and because I had to borrow the car, I'm still underage. I'm still like 16, 17, so I had to borrow the car, so my parents wanted to know, well, what is this guy involved in? But once they visited a few rehearsals, they saw that... Um, it was something very uh, uh, creative and positive. During this time, the AACM was establishing itself as far as an organization and um, asked me if I wanted to attend a meeting. So um, I think um, I was uh, uh, attended the, uh, the very third meeting of this organization that was just being formed. And um, uh, next thing I knew, I was attending meetings on Saturdays, and I realized that I was involved in something larger than just um, playing concerts. I was um, just a regular kid on the south side of Chicago who was studying music and had no idea of if I were going to make a career out of this or not, but upon attending the that first rehearsal and the second rehearsal, I realized right away that I knew I wanted to be a musician and knew that uh, I really like um, uh, playing music creatively and collectively. That's what was unique about uh, um, the early days and also now is that uh, it's a collective situation. Um, trap drums is one of the oldest instruments that has been involved with jazz and it, had, it has uh, maintained itself through the history uh, since the ninth, since the early uh, uh, 19th century all the way up to the present. I wrote for the trap drums to act more as a percussionist. The, the role of the trap drums in this score um, is actually uh, playing a dual role. It's playing an accompaniment role as well as a leadership role playing melodic lines along with the, uh, the marimba and the vibraphone. Southside Suite is in uh, four sections, and um, each section represents uh, some of the uh, uh, and many of the musical styles that I have uh, uh, performed. Um, there are rhythms that are swing and jazz rhythms. There's uh, one section in Southside Suite, there's a blues section um, with a shuffle beat. Um, there is a section in avant-garde where the, the rhythms are disjointed and free. 
Um, and there are sections in the piece that uh, would uh, represent more of a jazz section. And um, so the uh, Southside Suite um, is comprised of all these different styles because I have played a lot of uh, uh, many of these different styles. Um, and I was uh, um, just looking for a way that I can employ all these different styles within one composition. To New York, my first trip to New York was in uh, for the memorial of uh, John Coltrane, and um, and since then, all of my colleagues from Chicago, Anthony Braxton, Henry Threadgill, uh, Amina Claudia Myers. Uh, they all have uh, had left Chicago and uh, came to New York. Fortunately, I was employed uh, under Schubert Theater, and um, I really had no reason to quit uh, to come to New York and start all over again. <laughs> uh, but also from '78, I was also working with uh, Anthony Braxton and Sam Rivers, so I had. In, in some ways have been uh, uh, breaking into the New York scene since they were already in New York. And finally, in 1980, I uh, moved down to the East Village, and this was uh, a, a prime time to move down to the Village because the uh, downtown scene was just beginning to evolve and develop. Um, um, I started working with Billy Bang and William Parker and Roy Campbell um, uh, in addition to uh, working with Sam Rivers and Anthony Braxton. So my, my, my um, uh, time with playing some creative music was, uh, was really happening at the time. Um, I was very busy and I realized that this was the greatest move that I made and hadn't looked back.